continue showing how to draw and model various framing materials. This video is going to show how to quickly draw 4x4s and 6x6s. And when we go to the build building with bytes segment, I'll show how to manipulate those posts a little bit. I've worked on this model a little bit, um, hid some of the sheathing that we put on in the how to draw plywood panel segment and then went through and changed the texture on all the framing lumber so it looks different than the plywood. If you've seen some of those other, other videos, you'll notice those changes. So I'm going to put on the, turn the axis on here so we can kind of know where we're at. Turn off the shadows and bring up the layers dialog box and use that to hide our decorations, which is the sawhorse. And I think the rest of this can stay. And there's a couple ways of going about this. I could take a two by four and fatten it up to make it a four by four, but it's simple enough because we're gonna use a different material color anyways. We're just gonna start with a, a new group here. So I drew a rectangle there. I'm gonna go 3.5 comma 3.5 to make it three and a half inches square. Jump right in, make that a group. And then go into edit the group. Let's pull this thing up. Let's make it 10 feet or 120 inches. And then we have a four by four, just like that. And I'm gonna do the same thing. Let's go ahead and make a six by six while we're at it. And I could go through and modify this four by four to do this, but It'll be simple to just type in 5.5 comma 5.5, double click, make that a group, enter the group, push pull it up to, or stretch it up to 10 feet. Ah, look at that, it went backwards, it went down. Let's just go up and index it on there. Okay, so there's a couple posts. Simple as that, if any, any size you're working on, um, that's all it takes to get that done. But we're gonna wanna, put a projected texture on here so that the ends of the posts look like end grain. I guess if you're goofy about these things like I am. So let's do that. I'm just, just gonna retrace one of these faces because it's quick and easy. Double click that, move it, and then rotate that face in the blue direction here. Let's just rotate it 40 degrees, which is good enough. And I think we'll call these, try to make them like redwood posts here. So I'm gonna go into my wood selection. And then we'll grab something here. This cherry is gonna work. I'm just gonna stick it on that face. And we'll shrink that grain a little bit down with a right click into the texture and position. Let's tighten up that grain a little bit. Okay, that'll work. And being as it's redwood, let's go ahead and redden it just a little bit. Let's see what we get here. Yeah, let's go with that. It's good enough. And then last thing is to left click that to get just the surface, right click, go to texture, and then take projected. So then when we click into one of these posts, I'm gonna triple click once I get in there Hit the select tab, grab the eyedropper, and let's do that again. Take this, there we go. That looks like a nice end grain thing going on there. Same thing with this post. And now that we have this post covered with, colored with the projected texture, I can sample either our projected panel or this post. Either way, it should put that same texture on this post, which is good. There's a couple, there's a four by four and a six by six. And not a whole lot more than that to it. These can be made any length, uh, various sizes. If you had a, a four by eight or a six by eight post, it'd be easy enough to just go in here and stretch one of these out a couple inches. And then all of a sudden you have a six by eight um, post instead of a six by six. So we'll back that up and just leave it at that. A couple of couple of posts, not a whole lot to be done, but as you've seen, if you're watching other parts of this series, it's a great starting point to 
um, have this sort of material to work with and just expand from there by multiplying the groups and, and or changing them to components. So in a minute we'll do a segment on working and manipulating these posts and how to go about that. For the building with bytes segment of this tutorial, we'll do a little manipulating with these posts and the steps I'll go through are pretty much the same for either size post, but I'm just going to hide the 4x4 just because it'll be easier to see what's going on with a 6x6. So it's going to take this post and add it to the decorations link here so that it's turned off with the rest of that stuff and it'll be out of the way. And we'll do some work with this 4x4. Turn off the shadows. Um, so just for grins, let's uh, assume that this upper deck is going to get cantilevered and so it'll get supported by a 6x6 post and of course this is all disproportionate to what needs to be done. But uh, I'm going to take a post and just I already made it the same length, take a post and then let's explode this. And then we're going to turn it into a group. And we're going to put, um, oops, no, explode. It already was a group. We're going to explode it and make it a component. So what I want to do, and that's going to call that six by six support. Six by six support comment. We're going to make sure this replace selection with component option is selected. It generally is as a default, but once in a while it'll catch you off guard when it's not. So now we have a component. I'm just going to move and copy this over to the other side. Let's see if I can get that to index. And move it in the red direction and index it to the inside of this plywood. Yeah, so they're lined up. And then let's just move those out. Oops. I'll take them both by holding shift and selecting both. Move tool and then we're just going to move it out in this green direction. Let's go 96 inches or 8 feet out. All right, and then let's go into this group and bring this guy out 8 feet. Right to the outside of that. Same thing with this one. If we would have made these a component, I could have done these both at the same time, but this is simple enough to do it as groups. That puts the puts them through there. Okay, you can see where these go in together and this with the Z flashing going on. And so the method to use here is, because this is a component, let's just go in and change one of these. And um, all I'm going to do is draw this rectangle, retrace the, the end of that 2x6 and you can see the little box says endpoint outside active. That lets you know that you're on the end of something that's outside of the active group. So when we take the push pull tool here and index it, presto, we have a notch for that two by to six in to sit in. And because we made it a component, we have a change on the other post as well. But this is the lesson I wanted to show. The notch is on the wrong side. So we could rotate rotate this post or other things, but the quickest way to resolve this little Peccadillo is to select that post, take the scale tool, go down here on one of the middle handles, hold down the control key and it'll reverse itself around itself. And when the red scale box down here says minus one, you know that you have a mirror image of it. And so when I'm doing uh, multiplying or copying components and I know I'm going to have a left and a right um, in the earlier step when I when I copied that post component I would have flipped it right away but either way that's how you fix that it all works pretty well and then so we're going to take and put some joists out here somebody's going to yell at me because that's just a single member and it's not strong enough but this is uh, more intended to show 
sketching sketch up technique than proper carpentry. So let's move this with a control. I'm going to go 16 inches. Enter. Actually, let's go 32. Enter. And now let's move and control that. 1, 6, enter, 6, X, enter. So that adds some uh, pieces there. And we'll take this one and move it back. Alignment here. And here again, if this is real carpentry, a person would be going about this a little differently with the layout and spacing and support and stuff. But uh, this is just showing ways of modeling this stuff quickly. So you can see the Z flashing here again. So let's just trace this little piece out here. And another one over here. Grab the push pull tool and see if it remembered that five and a half. It sure did. And the nice thing about this is the post doesn't need to be flipped again. If we copy one of these posts and move it. Out, oops. If we move and copy the post don't make it disappear. You can see how those notches are quickly made for those two by uh, sixes to sit on there and that's all pretty simple to do and it's a way of manipulating those posts. And you could do the same thing with four by fours, same principle, all that stuff applies. What you do to one component will happen to the other. You can flip them around and make things work out but this, uh, this is a quick way of doing an overview of how to create 4x4s and 6x6s and then some thoughts on manipulating those into uh, framing members uh, for project planning. So I hope that makes sense. I hope it's helpful and we'll cover some more stuff in another video.